Programming languages are the building blocks of any software. To develop a software or application, you need to be well versed in languages like Java, Python, PHP, and many more. But Java is one of the oldest and the easiest programming language. Can Java be replaced by something that's more efficient than what it is? The answer to this is what this tutorial video is all about. So hi everyone, this is Vaishnavi from Edureka and I welcome you all to this interesting session on Kotlin tutorial for beginners. So we'll be discussing about one of the trending programming language Kotlin. I assume most of them do not know what Kotlin is. So I'll be giving you a brief introduction to this topic and also I'll be discussing how to run a program in Kotlin. Okay. But before we start digging deep into this topic, let's take a look at the agenda. First of all, I'll be talking about the history of Kotlin, how it grew to be one of the most prominent programming language, then talk about its major features and show you guys the exact architecture of how Kotlin works. Moving further, we'll also see how to run Kotlin programs and talk about the IDEs and how to set up the corresponding IDE on the system. And then we'll move ahead to the practical part of this session. That is, we'll learn different concepts like inheritance, class, objects, interface, functions, and many more. Okay, so I hope the agenda was clear, and I also suggest you to subscribe to our Edureka channel to never miss out any updates on the trending technologies. So let's get it started. What is Scotland? What is the history behind the growth of the Scotland? So Scotland is a statically typed general purpose programming language. It is widely used to develop Android applications. If you have the basic knowledge of Java, you will be able to learn Kotlin in no time. This Kotlin tutorial is basically designed for beginners, so you would be able to understand Kotlin programming even if you have no knowledge on Java. Okay, so how did Kotlin come into existence? JetBrains unveiled a project Kotlin, which is a new language for the JVM which was under development for more than a year and odd. Okay, one of the major goal of this project is to reduce the compilation time of Kotlin when it is compared to Java. So in February 2012 JetBrains open sourced this project under the Apache 2 license. Okay, but now Kotlin has been Google's preferred language for Android development since May 7 2019. So this is very exclusive. So Kotlin was officially supported by Google for mobile development on Android since the release of Android Studio 3.0 Kotlin is included as an alternative to the standard Java compiler. So this tutorial video will help you learn everything about this trending programming language Kotlin. So Kotlin comes under various version. The first version 1.0 was released in Feb 2016. Considering it to be the first officially stable release. But in the year 2017 Google announced the first class support for Kotlin on Android in the same year they released another version of Kotlin that is version 1.2 which shares code between JVM and the JavaScript platform which was newly added to this release and in the coming year that is 2018 they released another version of Kotlin that is 1.3 bringing core routines for asynchronous programming. But now in May 2019 Google announced that Kotlin is now its preferred language for Android application developers. So let's see what Kotlin is. As I mentioned earlier Kotlin is a programming language which was introduced by JetBrains the official designer of the most intelligent Java IDE which is IntelliJ IDEA. This is a strong statically typed language that runs on JVM. Kotlin is an open source programming language that combines object oriented programming and functional features into a unique platform. The content is divided into various chapters that contain related topics with simple and useful examples. We'll see what these chapters and topics are in the further classes. Kotlin and Java are interoperable, which means that you can use both of them together in a single project as well as you can rewrite a Java code into Kotlin efficiently. The syntax of Kotlin is concise than Java. Say for example, you've written 10 to 15 lines of code in Java, but in Kotlin the length of the code will reduce up to six to seven. Okay, so this is why coding is concise when it is compared to Java. So in this tutorial we'll learn why to use Kotlin. What are its advantages and several guides on various topics of Kotlin. Okay, so we'll first begin with the features of Kotlin. So these are the features of Kotlin. It is concise, interoperable, open source, 
trustworthy feature rich easy to understand and less error prone okay so these are the major features of kotlin so let's understand them in detail kotlin is concise than java so you need to write an approximate of 40 percent less code when it is compared to java so that's what concise means then it is interoperable kotlin is highly interoperable with java you would not face any difficulty using kotlin in a java project it is open source kotlin is an open source programming language all the developers out there look for something which is open source you need not pay for this all the developers out there look for something that is free of cost so this is one of the open source programming language just like java but when you compare its features kotlin has the upper hand over java so we'll compare java and uh, kotlin in our next video so first let's move on here trustworthy okay you can trust kotlin as it is developed by a popular and well-known company called jetbrains i think most of the developers out there know what jetbrains is know what they can do okay so jetbrains is known for creating several development tools okay the popular java ide which is intellij which was also developed by the same company so i'll be using intellij as a platform to work on kotlin because it was officially designed by jetbrains the same company which created kotlin and moving further it is feature rich kotlin provides several advanced features such as operator overloading lambda expression string templates and many more and it is easy to understand kotlin is very easy and simple to learn if you have come from a java background you would find it easy to learn kotlin it is less error prone this is what all the developers look for you need not worry about the errors in kotlin guys as i mentioned earlier kotlin is statically typed programming language which means that you would be able to catch the errors at compile time as a statically typed programming language do type checking at compile time okay so this is about the features of kotlin now let's move ahead and take a look at the architecture of kotlin kotlin has its own architecture to allocate memory and produce a quality output to the end user so we'll come across different scenarios where Kotlin compiler will work differently whenever it is targeted to other languages like Java and JavaScript. So Kotlin compiler creates a byte code and that byte code can run on the JVM, which is exactly equal to the byte code generated by java.class file. Okay, so whenever two byte coded files run on JVM, they can communicate with each other and this is how an interoperable feature is established in Kotlin for Java. So whenever Kotlin targets a JavaScript, the Kotlin compiler converts the .kt file into ES5.1 that is executable file and generates a compatible code for JavaScript. So the Kotlin compiler here is capable of creating platform basis compatible codes. So this is about the architecture of Kotlin guys. Now let's move on to the most interesting part of this session, the practical part where we'll learn how exactly Kotlin works. Okay. So for that we require an IDE to perform certain actions. So as I mentioned earlier Kotlin and IntelliJ are the products of the company called JetBrains. So it will be more useful to work on the IntelliJ platform. You can also consider using Android Studio. For Android Studio version 3.0 onwards this Kotlin is inbuilt. You don't have to install this from a website and link it to your project. Okay. You can also use Eclipse for this but we will consider using the IntelliJ as uh, it is more compatible and it is more preferred as it is a product of uh, the jet brains okay so let's see how you can install intellij so we'll see how to download intellij ide so first search for intellij download i've already searched for this so click on it yeah you will find the first link which says download intellij ide the Java ID for professional developers by JetBrains. So click on it. So this IntelliJ platform comes in two versions. That is the ultimate version for uh, web and enterprise development and a community edition for JVM and Android development. So as you can see, uh, this provides a free trial and this is free and open source. So we'll go for the community edition and download the executable file. Just click on the download link. OK, you can see that it's downloading here. IntelliJ is also similar to Eclipse. I think most of the people who worked on Java would have worked on uh, Eclipse, but even this IDE is comparatively better than the Eclipse. Okay, it's downloaded. 
So I'm just going to open in a folder or just open. Yes, click on next and it selects a path in which it is going to be stored as. So it's in program files. So continue. So this is all like generic. I think it is ready to go here. So just click on next. It says JetBeans install. So you can see that the jar files are being extracted. That's basically Java jar files. And do note that you need to have a Java installed in your system. So this is like the very basic step when you're working on application development. Okay, so run the community edition and click on finish. It's loading the workspace. So you can see this is the latest version of the community edition. It says 2019.1. Okay, so this is the IntelliJ IDEA. Okay, so it is loading the project. I have already created a new project, so it will just display it, not added anything for now. So you can find tips here just like Eclipse. So if you're new to IntelliJ, you'll have various tips to follow here. Okay, so it is like a shortcut to your project. So just close this for now. So you can find this shortcut route here. In order to access anything you want in the workspace, it says search everywhere. Just click on double shift. See this thing pops up and then uh, you want to go to files. Just click on control shift and N. the same like you do in Google. That's for incognito, but still this is for IntelliJ. And then if you want to get the navigation bar, just click on alt and home. See this one gets selected. So as you can see, there is a project being created here by the name new project. You can also rename this project as well, and it also specifies the path in which the project lies. You have the IDEA folder, which holds all the libraries related to the IntelliJ platform, the output. The output folder, which basically holds the output of the project. So this comes under the production. Just click on the drop down. You'll find the name of the project that is new project and the meta information regarding it. So this is where the output of the projects lie. Okay, clear with this. I think everybody know what source field is. So the source folder is where the project source files are located and IML. So you can find another file by the name new project dot IML. So what is this IML file? So I'll just click on this. You'll find an XML format of this new project IML file. So what is an IML? IML is a module file created by the IntelliJ IDEA. It stores information about the Java module, which may be a Java plugin, Android, or a Maven component. It says the module parts, dependencies, and other settings also. If you can find that the module type is a Java module, which comes under the name a new module root manager, and the content URL is this, okay? And the source folder, the place where the source is found. So, this is about the new project IML file. Now, what is the external libraries? External libraries are generally the libraries which you download online. Okay. So, for example, in case Java is downloaded, yeah, my current version of Java is 1.8 and it is found in this path. So, just click on the drop down, you'll find all the Java libraries. And what is Kotlin Java runtime? This holds all the Kotlin libraries. So I think we're good to go and write our first Kotlin program in the IntelliJ platform. Excited guys? Come on, let's take a look at how this can be done. I think you guys will find it way too easy compared to Java. So let's take a look at how this can be done. So first I'm going to create a new class or a Kotlin class and name it my first. Kotlin project and uh, you can also find class here class interface enum class object. So first I'm going to stick to file. So click on OK. Yeah, so this is where we'll write our code. So the first thing you do in Java or C++ or Python is write a hello world program. So let's see how you can do this in Kotlin. So first I'm going to write the main function here. So just follow my instructions and you'll be there. So function main call the arguments which is of the form array string. Okay, you can find the suggestions here just like the Eclipse ID. So you can see that it throws an error here saying the function 
must have a body. Okay, so I'm just going to create it and print Ellen. And I'm going to print hello world. Yeah, in this case, you don't need to use the semicolons like we used to use in Java or C++. Okay, so even if you use a semicolon, it's not an issue. So I prefer not using the semicolon. It saves up most of your time. So let's run this program first. Okay, there you can see an option called run here. And it also has a shortcut shift and F10. Okay, so just click on this. Specify the name. And run. It will take some time as we're running it for the first time. You can see the progress here. It has to build and then run. Okay, so let's quickly zoom in. So there is a shortcut for a zoom in and zoom out in the IntelliJ platform. So you just have to click on control and scroll. You scroll up, it zooms in and you scroll backwards. It decreases the size. Okay, so just click on control and this. So I think the code is visible to you guys. So let me just quickly run it. So it says run my first Kotlin project. Just click on it. OK, so you can see that the program's output has been printed here. It says hello world. OK, so this is the basic simple program which we would do whenever we are new to the subject. So first I'm going to introduce you to the various shortcuts and the keywords in the IntelliJ IDE. So the first shortcut I'll be discussing about is how to generate the code. So click on alt and click on insert. So this helps in providing two options. It says generate and copyright. So it says no copyright configured for this file. So would you like to edit the copyright settings? So click on cancel and you can also generate it. And I don't know why if this is not happening. I think I've already written the code here. So that's the reason maybe it's not happening. So this is the first shortcut and another shortcut is alt and home. This helps in specifying the navigation bar here. So it says new project and under source is where our project resides. And you can notice this extension dot KT, which means that it's a Kotlin file. You can find this in the source folder also. It says my first Kotlin project dot KT. So this means it is a Kotlin project. So let's move ahead to our next shortcut. It is control and back code. And uh, this thing pops up wherein you can select your color scheme. Just click on color scheme. We are in default. You can use Dracula or high contrast. Let me show you how this looks like. Yep. So this is how the dark color theme looks like. So just click on control and black code again. So just go back to our uh, default here. Yep. Click on this again. So you will find the code style. It's project or default. So it's in project anyway. So control and black code again. You'll find the key map wherein you can find different IDs also. Yeah, you can find NetBeans, Sublime Test, Eclipse, Eclipse for Mac, and so on. Okay, so we are currently in default copy. So let's keep it as it is. And we'll go to view mode. It is presentation mode or distraction fee mode. Let's try the presentation mode. So this is how the presentation mode looks like. So you can easily write your code here. So let's exit the presentation mode. Yeah. Okay. And the next we have look and feel, which is Dracula or high contrast or it is IntelliJ. So we'll use the IntelliJ look and feel here, guys. So I hope the shortcuts were clear to you. So now let's take a look at the file here. It says new project, project from existing sources, project from version control, which has get, mercurial, subversion, module, Java class, Kotlin class file a scratch file a package and so many options here which are not there on eclipse or on the android studio open recent close project settings you can also customize your file uh, visibility project structure the settings like settings for new project run configuration templates export settings export a zip file which is a new feature save all synchronize and validate caches or a restart the project export to html print add to favorites there are so many you can even use the power saver mode here guys so now let's explore the edit here it says undo cut copy relative delete find macros find macros convert incidents and so on okay so view 
you can view the toolbar where you can view the project favorites run to do's structure the ant build even log even maven is there and the open terminal okay show siblings there are a lot of options here guys okay you can also surround your code with a try catch or uh, the exceptions reformat the code right and analyze the code inspection by name current file analysis this is a lot i mean this will be useful for a lot of developers out there and thanks to JetBrains for giving us this supremely useful IDE. Okay, you can build, build a new project, build a module, generate and build, generate an APK file and run. And then we have tools such as uh, tasks and contents, generate a Java doc, save project as a template, manage, groove, console, and many more. So this is about the IntelliJ platform. So now that you've understood how to write a program in Kotlin, now let's move ahead and learn more about how to run different programs, learn about the data types, arrays, strings, and so on. Hope you guys find this very interesting. So moving ahead, we'll start with the OOPS concept first, that is how to create a class, how to create an object, how to create a variable, and so on, okay? So the first thing you need to do is create a class. So I'm gonna right click on it, new, Kotlin, I need a class, so select the class and name this as new class. Okay, click on OK. So you can find the class with the name new class under which we're going to write our code. So the very first thing you do in Java is declare a variable of the data type, name it int, float, or so on. Just call a variable of the type. So you just declare a variable there. But here you're going to use a keyword called var and val. Var is usually referred as the variable and I'm going to specify a new variable here. So here I'm going to be considering using var that is a variable and uh, give it a name course and it requires initialization. So I'm going to initialize it to a blank string here as this is a form of a string. It needs to be initialized and specified that it is a string. Just type a colon and specify it is of the form string. Yeah, this is clear. And after specifying it as a form of a string, let's go back to our first file that is my first Kotlin project file. And I'm going to declare a variable here to link it to the new class file. Okay, so the variable is of the name Edureka. And I hope you guys remember how to instantiate or create a new variable in Java. So you would use the keyword new and specify the variable there, but in Kotlin there is no need for the new keyword. All you have to do is just simply call the new class function. So you can see that it is already here. The name is here. It says root. So just add this done. So this is how simple you can create a variable in Kotlin. So considering the variable and the class that is dot course. And I'm going to specify the string here, which I'm going to name it as Kotlin tutorial. And say if you want to print this particular command, so I'm going to just use print ln. Yeah, and I'm going to write name is by using a colon. And uh, if you guys remember in Java, we would specify outside the quotes saying plus and specifying the location of the variable. So even in this case, I'll try doing it. I'm going to use plus operator edureka dot course. Yeah, and let's see how this works. Just click on run. Yeah, it prints Kotlin tutorial, right? And there is another way you can print this particular command. So instead of specifying it outside the code, I'm going to use it inside the codes and use dollar instead of plus. Okay, and be it in the flower braces specifying it under the flower braces you can see that it is highlighted so just run this program here it will give the same output yeah it says the name is kotlin tutorial okay so this is how you declare a variable in kotlin so every variable must be declared any attempt to use a variable that hasn't been declared is yet to throw a syntax error Thus, it helps in protecting you from accidentally assigning to a misspelled variable. 
So now that you've understood how to declare a variable in Kotlin, let's take a look at the read only variables or the val. So frequently you'll find this during the lifetime of the variable that you declared. All it needs to do is refer to one object so you can declare it using the val keyword. The terminology here is that the var declares a mutual variable and the val declares a read only or assign once variable. So both of these kinds are actually called variables in general. So let's see how val works in Kotlin. First, let's try declaring a value in our class. Hope it is visible to you guys. So I'll just rename this as val. You can see it is not throwing any error. As I mentioned, val is a constant. It can be declared only for a constant value. Like say for example, you know the specific length and width of a rectangle. So you can use this val in that case. So let's try changing it here. So you can see it throws an error saying val cannot be reassigned. So as it is a constant, you cannot reassign the value of the string. As you can see, it already has a value which is a null string. So here as we assign it to a new text, it does not take the value. Now let's change this to val and check what happens. So this must be a variable guys. So this can't be assigned. So let's change it to var so that you can access it in this project. Now what if this variable edureka is uh, considered as a val or declared as a val? Let's check out. It doesn't throw any error here because we are creating a new class for this. So now just in case if you want to try for another class of the name edureka is equal to. New class. It throws an error saying while cannot be reassigned. So this is where the problem arises. So while is used as a constant variable var and val are the two variables in Kotlin. So I hope this was clear to you guys. So we'll change this to var and just in case I'm going to create another object of this. Edureka is equal to. New class. Yeah, you can see that it throws no errors. So I'm just going to copy this print ln statement and paste it over here. Yeah, it throws no error as such. So but let's try running this program. As you can see the first statement printed here is name is Kotlin tutorial, but for the second print ln statement it is blank here. Because this is a new object and the new object will have the default value which is blank. So that's why we get a blank string here. So now I'll just take this off. And I'm going to consider value. As X and specify it as a form of string. Yeah, and I'm going to give this value. A number or it is an integer value. See as you can see it throws an error. It says integer literal does not contain conform to the expected type output. So you have to specify it in the form of braces. So now I'm going to print this value. So I'm going to write print ln. And the value is. I'm going to consider the dollars I'm going to write X of the form string. OK, so let's run this program and check if the value is printing. It says the value is three. So this is how val and var work in Kotlin. So let's move on to a next topic that is data type in Kotlin. So the data type refers to the type and size of the data associated with variables and functions. This data type is used for declaration of memory location of variables which determines the features of data. I think you guys know what is a data type in Java. So this data type is also similar to what it was in Java. In Kotlin everything is an object just like how it was in Java. Kotlin also works on objects which means that you can call the member function and the properties of any variable. So Kotlin has inbuilt data type which are categorized as a number character boolean array and string. So first let's take a look at the number types. 
So the number types are similar to what it was in Java. It has byte, short, int, long, float, and double. And what about the characters? So the characters are represented using a keyword called char, and the characters here are declared using single quotes. And what about the Boolean types? The Boolean data is represented using the type called Boolean. It contains two value as you all know it is either true or false. So this comes under value. So you need to assign a value to it first. So this is about the data types in Kotlin. So now let's move ahead to another important part of this session that is arrays in Kotlin. Arrays in Kotlin are generally represented by the array class and these arrays are created using the library function array of and array constructor. Array has various functions like get and set size property as well as some other useful member functions. So let's see how to create an array using the library function array of. So let's take a look at a program first. I'm just going to take this off for now. So the first thing you'll do in Java or C, C++ is to specify the array size, right? But in this case, you don't have to do that. You just have to simply declare a variable and I'm going to call this as numbers. Where you'll find an independent function int array of where you'll specify the arrays. So let me say I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It can go up to whatever number you want. So let's print this array first. Print Ellen. So I'll say the array is dollar numbers. So let's run this program. As you can see, this is a hash code for an array. It says it is specified, repeat, it is specified as at and it is the hash code for this array. What do you have to do in order to get the individual values? It is simple, guys. I'm just going to add a for loop here for i in numbers. And I'm going to print i. So let's run this. I'll explain what is a for loop and why is it like this in the upcoming section. Let's run this. You can see that it is printed in the next line. Yeah, it says 5, 10, 15, 20. So this is how arrays work in Kotlin. Now, say for example, if you want to change the specific value of the array, like say you want to change the value from 20 to 22, how will you do that using Kotlin? All you need to do is just specify the name of the variable that is numbers specified in the square brackets as it is an array. And if you can remember, we used to specify the array using its index values. The first value is always zero, which is a of zero, a of one, a of two, and so on, right? So this is a of three. So it's zero, one, two, three. So the value of this index is three. So I'm going to specify it in the square bracket. And I'm going to assign this value as 22. So now let's run this program and check if it's working. You can see that the value is updated to 22. So this is how arrays work in Kotlin. Now people might actually find it difficult to specify the object and uh, use this index in order to write the script. I'm going to comment this uses as a comment. So I'm going to use the get and set methods in this case. So I'm going to set. You can see this set one to five or six. It's already five to I'm going to set the first value that is the first index value that is 10 to six. So let's see if this is working. Yeah, you can see that it is updated to six here. Now let's try to get this array. So I'm going to call numbers dot get so it says no value passed for parameter index so i'm going to call this as three so we'll get the value of the index three that is 20. so let's run this program as we are using for loop here it is going to print it for five times so i'm just going to take off this for loop for now yeah and run it 
Yeah, as you can see it prints 20 here whose index is 3. Now say if you want to get the value of the last index that is 4. How would you do that using Kotlin? So I'm just going to take off this and just specify last. So this gets the value of the last element or the last pointed index. Okay, it says 25. You can also get the last index value of the array. I'm going to say last index and let's run it. It is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It should print 4. Yeah. So this is how arrays work. Now, say if you don't want to specify the values in the array, how do you do that using Kotlin? So I'm just going to take off this thing and write int. So we have a method in Kotlin which says int array. Yeah. And specify the index that is 5. Yeah, it says size is of 5. And uh, I'm just going to take this off the comments. Take this off too. But still, I'm going to print the value of i. So I'm going to be printing numbers. So let's run this program and check what happens. So this is because we've set only one value. Okay. So I'm going to take this off. So I'm going to consider numbers dot set. 0, 0,5 and 1, 6 is already there. So numbers dot set 2, 10. Numbers dot set 3, 15. Numbers dot set 4, 20. Is it 5? It's 5. So I'm going to print the numbers. So let's run this program and check the output. Okay, it again prints the hash code, which means that we need to use the for loop for printing. So I'm going to consider writing for i in numbers and print i. Okay, so I'll run this program now. It has to print 5, 6, yeah. So you can see it prints 5, 6, 10, 15, 20. So this is how you set the value to an array of the particular size specified. So this is just like Java with a little bit modifications here and there. Now all we did was deal with the integer values. Now say for example, if you want to deal with a float value or double long or so. So I'm just going to take this off. You can find float value. Yeah, float array and going to specify the size. So this is of the size and uh, it will throw an error because this is not a float value. And the same goes with a string also. If you want to call an array of string, so just specify array of nulls. So this basically helps in providing a null string. So we need to specify the type here, which is of the form string and specify the size of the array. So I'm going to consider it as four. So these are not string values. So do specify these in the form of string so it will work. So this is everything you need to know about arrays in Kotlin. So let's move ahead and learn about the next topic that is operators in Kotlin. I hope you guys have understood the hello world program and how arrays work in Kotlin. Now let's move ahead and learn how operators work. This is basically the second most important thing you do after you start learning any programming language. That is how to add two numbers. So I'm going to declare a variable called number one, which is of the form integer. And I'm going to call another variable, call it number two, and which is also of the form int. Okay. So what if I try to print this number one? It will throw an error saying it is an inline operator. So I'm going to specify the value of it as four and I'm going to specify the value of it as five. It again shows an error. It says it's an inline function. Kotlin is case sensitive. You have to specify an integer form of this variable. Okay. Done. It will print 
the value of the first integer. OK, it prints four. Now, say, for example, if you want to add num1 plus num2, store it in the folder or another variable called result. Call it variable result and print this variable result. OK, let's see if it works or not. It works, guys. So this should be in the form of a variable. It should not be a val because value is a constant. You can either print this as a value instead of a var. OK, and even this. Let's check if it works. Yeah, it prints the same one. So as we've used values here, which are constant, I'm going to try using val instead of var here. So let's check out if it works. Yeah, it works. So this is how you add two numbers in Kotlin. You can do this in another way also. So I'm just going to take this off and I'm going to say num1 plus num2. So I'm just going to print this now. Okay, it again prints number nine. Now let's change the values of this. Let's say 40 and I'm going to say it as 33. Yeah, let's print this. OK, so it prints 73. So this is how you add two numbers in Kotlin. Now say, for example, if you want the difference of it. So I'm going to print. Number one. Minus number two. So this prints the difference between these two numbers. OK, it prints seven. So this is how you subtract two values in Kotlin. Let's move ahead and learn about the control flow statements and expressions. So in this control flow expressions, we'll be talking about if, when, for loop, while loop, do while, return and jump and continue structure. So let's see how you can do this using Kotlin. So first we'll talk about the if statement. So let's see what it's all about. In Kotlin, if is an expression which returns a value. It is used to control the flow of the program structure. There are various types of if expressions in Kotlin. They are namely if else expression, if else ladder expression, and nested if expression. So, first we'll start with the traditional if statement. I think all of you know how this if else statement works in Java. It is exactly the same as it is in Java, guys. You just have to specify the condition under if and the corresponding code within the curly braces. If else is if specifying the condition code within the curly braces and if that condition doesn't satisfy it jumps to another loop else and runs the corresponding code. So this is how the if else expression looks in Kotlin and another thing to note here is that the if expression is not used as a standalone. It is used with the if else expression and the result of this if else expression is assigned to a variable. In Java, all we used to do is specify the condition and print the corresponding code. But in Kotlin, you need to assign a variable to the corresponding condition in order to work with the if else expression. Now let's see how you can implement this if else statements. So I'm just going to take off this print ln thing and I'm going to specify this as a variable here and here too. And now the first thing I'm going to do is if the number one is greater than number two. So this is the way you can connect to the if else statement here. If num one is greater than num two, I'm going to print number two. OK. So let's run this program and check. It takes a lot of time to compile. It is printing the second value that is num two here. Now let's say. Else. I'm going to print. Num one. I'm going to give this value as 30. Yeah, and I'm going to run this. So it is printing 30, which is num one here. So you can also do this by assigning a variable to this. So I'm going to create a variable and call it integer which is equal to the condition 
create an integer and take this off. So I'm going to specify, give it a integer value that is initializing it to zero first. And then if num1 is greater than num2, this thing happens. Okay, so it is throwing an error. It says assignments are not expressions and only expressions are allowed in this context. Assigning this value here, no? So I have to specify the type that it is of the form integer. All you need to do is take off this equal sign and put a colon. Done with it. So I'm just going to run this code. Yeah, so it is printing 30 here. Okay. Now say I'm going to take this braces off and uh, specify the integer as num1 and take this off else integer equals num2 and after this I'm going to print the integer okay now let's see what's the result of this code okay so it's printing 33 why so we've mentioned if num1 is greater than num2 as you can see it is clearly not the greater 30 is not greater than 33 if that is the case i would have print number one that is 30. as this condition doesn't satisfy it jumps to the else loop it takes the value of number two that is 33 and it prints the integer value which is 33 so that's how you get the output as 33. You can also do another thing by assigning a variable to this particular if statement, which is also called an expression. So I'm going to call this as an integer. And I'm going to take this off, which returns the value of num1 first and then returns the value of num2. So this is actually like a ternary operator, guys. As you can see, I'm just considering the variable integer and specifying with the condition and it returns the value num1. If in case num1 is greater than num2, it returns number 1 to the integer. If this condition isn't true, it goes to the else loop and it takes the value of number 2 to the integer variable. And in the end, it will print the integer. So let's run this program. It should print 33. So it is printing 33. So this is about the if else statement or expression in uh, Kotlin. So now let's talk about the when expression in Kotlin. This is something new when it is compared to Java. So this when expression is a conditional expression which returns a value. I think you guys must be clear with the switch statement in Java. In Kotlin, when is a replacement of the switch command. So this works exactly like the switch statement in Java, C++ and C. So let's take a look at the example for this first. So I'm going to first take this off specify a variable num I'm going to initialize the value of num here next I'm going to create another variable of the name when expression in this I'm going to specify the condition when and specify num at initializing the values or specifying the values so I'm going to use 1 and 2, 3. So you can see it is throwing an error. It says unresolved reference. So it should be in the form of a string. So specify it in the form of a string. Done. It has to be specified over here. If it is not 1, 2 or 3, I'm going to consider the else loop here and specify the statement to be printed that is invalid number. Okay. And after this, I'm going to print the value of the expression here that is when expression. Okay. So let's run this program here first. Okay, it prints invalid number because we have specified the num value as 4 here. Now say for example, if you say it as 2 and run this program. 
it prints 2 here. So this is how the when expression works in Kotlin. Now let's take a look at the multiple statement of this when expression using braces. So we can use this multiple statement enclosed within the block of condition. So first it's going to be the same specifying the variable and initializing a number to it. So I'm just going to take this off. Yeah. So when num, I'm going to delete this also. So under this I'm going to print a particular statement here. So first I'm going to assign the value here. So let me change the value first here to 6 and uh, I'm going to print Saturday. Sixth day of the week is Saturday and uh, I'm going to assign a value to this that is 6. Okay. 6. Yeah, this comes under the braces. And I'm going to print another statement that is the sixth day of the week. Right? So let's run this code and check if it's working. So it prints both these texts. It says Saturday and it says sixth day of the week. Now let's say for example if you have another number say 1 which is assigned to Monday. So after you print Monday I'm going to consider the else statement here. Else I'm going to specify it as print Ellen other days. Okay. So let's run this code. It's showing an error expecting an element. Okay. As you can see it is throwing an error. I'm just going to take off this curly braces from here. Good to go. So I'm just going to run this code. It prints Saturday which is the sixth day of the week. Now if I specify 1 instead of 6 and run this code. It prints Monday. If in case it is not Monday, it will print other days. So this is how the when expression works in Kotlin. So now that you've understood how the when expression works in Kotlin, let's move ahead and learn about the loops in Kotlin. I think all of you know what are loops in Java, right? So this is also similar to the loops in Java. So we have the for loop, while loop and to while loop. So let's see how for loop works in Kotlin. So this is a very simple procedure when you compare this with Java. Kotlin's for loop is used to iterate a part of the program several times just like how it works with Java. It iterates through arrays, ranges, collections or anything that helps for iteration. So this Kotlin for loop is equivalent to for each loop in C++. So let's take a look at the syntax of this. It says for specify the item in the collection and the body of the loop. How to iterate it through an array? Let's take a look at the example for it. As you guys are clear with the arrays, so I'm just going to take this off. As you guys are clear with how arrays work in Kotlin, I'm going to use the function array of. I'm going to specify the values here. I'm going to specify 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. Now I'm going to use the for loop in order to print this array. So for first thing you need to do is specify the object which you want to point it to the variable. So I'm going to consider it as item in num. Yeah, it says you can see the suggestion here. For item in num, I'm going to print. I'm going to print the item. So let's see how this works. Traces. Yeah, so you can see that it is printing 10, 15, 20, 25 in the next line, that is in the new line. So this is how for loop works in Kotlin. All you need to do is specify the object in the variable which is declared. It can be anything, guys. I've just considered item to be an object of the variable. Okay, and I'm going to print this item. So this prints the entire array. So you can give another number here, say 30, 40 or and so on. So this still prints the array. 
So you can see 30, 35 also added to this list. So this is how for loop works in Kotlin. So if the body of the for loop contains only a single line of statement, it is not necessary to be enclosed within the curly braces. I think all of you might have worked on Java and you might have figured out that we use curly braces after you uh, specify something in the condition for for loop. So in this case, you need not use the curly braces if it is a single line statement. Okay. Now let's take a look at how you can iterate it through the range. Kotlin lets you easily create ranges of values using the function range2. So this range2 function is usually complemented by in or exclamatory in functions. So let's see how you can write this. So the integral type ranges that is int range, long range, character range have an extra feature that is it can be iterated over. So these ranges are the progressions of the corresponding integral type. Such ranges are generally used for the iterations in the for loop. So first let's take a look at the syntax of this range here. It says if I in specify the range that is 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 6 or anything and print I. So it will print all of this in the form of 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is actually equivalent to 1 less than or equal to I and 1 less than or equal to 4 in the for loop which we used to use in Java. So this is how ranges work in uh, Kotlin and another thing to note here is in order to iterate numbers in reverse order we use the function called down to. So this function basically helps to print the bottom up elements. So that is for i in specify the largest range down to 1 and print the corresponding elements. So this command helps in printing the elements from 1 to 4 in the reverse order. That is it starts from 4 and ends with 1. So it is also possible to iterate a number range which does not include its end element. So for this we'll use the until function. So specify the for loop like i in 1 until 10. So this basically works as a square bracket and a open bracket. That is it starts from the range 1 but it does not include the value 10. Okay. So this is how the range works. I think I still haven't given you a proper definition of what is a range. We just noted on how to work with the range in uh, Kotlin. So what is the first thing that comes to your head when you hear the word range? All you can think of is that is you have the starting point and the end point of the particular element. It is of the same concept here. It is defined by its two endpoint values which are both included in the range. Ranges are defined for comparable types having an order you can define whether an arbitrary instance is in the range between the two given instances. So the main operation here on ranges is it contains a particular element which is usually used in the form of in and exclamatory in operators. Okay. So in order to create a range for your class you need to call the range to function on the start range value and provide the end value as an argument. Now let's try using this uh, range in our for loop. So I'm just going to take off this code here. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to use the for loop here for i in 1 to 5. I'm going to print i. Okay. Let's see if it is working. Let's run this code. So you can see that it is working guys. It says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in an order. So this is how the range in Kotlin works. I want to print the same thing in a reverse way. I'm going to consider using uh, for that I'm going to use i in 5 down to yeah you can get the specified uh, function here and specify the start. Okay I'm just going to run this prints the number in the reverse order. Okay, it says 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is how the for loop works in Kotlin. Now let's take a look at another loop which is while loop. While loop is used to iterate a part of the program several times. This loops execute the block of code until the condition has a true. So the Scotland while loop is similar to the Java while loop. You will find a lot of similarities between Kotlin and Java. So the syntax is uh, while specify the condition and the body of the loop. So let's take a look at the example for this while loop. I'm going to take off this for loop over here. So first I'll declare a variable and call it num. 
and I'm going to specify it as an integer value and I'm going to give this as 1 and after this I'm going to use the while loop okay so while num is less than or equal to 10 it has to print the value of num so I'm going to increment the value of num after each iteration so I'm going to call num plus plus so I'm going to run this code now let's check if it's working okay it is printing in a loop so the one thing I'll edit is I'm going to take this specification and I'll try printing this now stop and rerun okay this is still not working so let's see how while loop works in Kotlin so first I'm going to call a variable and call it I give it a number like say start with 1 so while i is less than or equal to 5 I'm going to print the values here so print ln and specify i so let's run this code and check if it's working properly or not you can see it is an infinite loop so in order to break this infinite loop and try to get the value of all the elements between 1 and 5 I'm going to use a break statement inside this loop so I'm going to use a curly braces here this break statement is used to terminate the enclosing loop so this statement works same as what it would do in Java so after specifying this break statement I'm going to run this code here so you can see that this program is still running so I'm just going to stop and rerun so this will print all the values from 1 to 5 so now let's take a look at the do while loop the do while loop in Kotlin is similar to the while loop except one key difference a do while loop first executes the body of the do block and after that it checks for the condition of while as the block of do while loop is executed first before checking the condition it executes at least once even if the condition in while is false so this while statement of the do while loop always ends with the semicolon it is similar to what we've learned in Java so the syntax of this do while loop is do specify the body of the block and while and specify the condition followed by a semicolon we need to add a semicolon in this case even though we don't specify or uh, use a semicolon in Kotlin so I'm just going to copy this while loop here do here and paste the command here followed by a semicolon okay it says expecting a top level declaration so that means it needs to be declared within the class yeah that is after this so first let's run this code so you can see that it is printing only one it is printing only the value of i here it is not iterating it so just going to take off this break statement and I'm going to increment the I value here and run it now it should print the values from 1 to 5 yeah you can see that it is printing values from 1 to 5 here so this is how the do while loop works in Kotlin and uh, if in case the condition in the while loop is false let's see what happens so here I'm going to specify the I value as 7 and the condition here is uh, while i is less than or equal to 5 7 is nowhere less than 5 so let's run this code and check it at least prints the value of the i yeah see you can see that it is printing the value of the i which is 7 okay so this is how do while loop works in kotlin now let's take a look at the return and jump statements in kotlin there are basically three jump expressions in kotlin these jump expressions are used in order to control the flow of program executions they are namely break continue and return I think you guys are clear with uh, what is a break statement now let's talk about continue and return so this continue statement is used to repeat the corresponding loop it continues the current flow of the program and skips the remaining code at the specified condition 
So if you specify the continuous statement with a nested loop, it only affects the inner loop and not the outer part of the code. So let's take a look at a practical example for this continuous statement. So I'm going to consider using the for loop in this case for i in 1 to 3 or 4. I'm going to print the value of i. Print ln i, which is of the form string. Okay, so we'll print like this i and specify dollar i, which must return the value of the string variable. And after this, I'm going to consider using the if condition. If I'll take another uh, variable here that is k is equal to 4. Okay, so if k is equal to 4, I'm going to continue the execution. So I'm going to print another statement here which says print ln code for if. You can see it is throwing an error, so I'm going to take this as j is equal to 4. And it is throwing an error saying only break and continue are allowed inside a loop. So this is a loop. I don't know why it is not taken. Okay, as you can see, it is throwing an error asking us to specify the continue and the break statements inside a loop. So I'm going to just create a loop here and uh, close it here. It says unresolved reference to J. So I'm going to create a variable called J and initialize it to 2. Okay, so I'm just going to run this code now. It says for i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 3 and in the end it will print the code for if. Okay. So this is how the continuous statement works in Kotlin. So now let's move ahead and talk about functions in Kotlin. Function is a group of interrelated block of code which performs a specific task. Function is used to break a program into different submodules. So this makes the reusability of code and makes the program more manageable. In Kotlin, functions are declared using the keyword fun. So there are two types of functions depending on whether it is available in a standard library or it is defined by the user. Now, what is the standard library function? This standard library function is a built-in library which are implicitly present in the library and available for use. So let me just take this off. First, I'm going to create a variable by name num and assign a value 25. Create another variable by the name result. Okay, result is equal to where I'm going to specify math dot square root of the variable that is num dot converted to double. Yes. And I'm going to print this value. Print ln. The result is dollar result. So let's run this. The result is 5.0. It takes the floating value here. So it prints the square root is or the result is 5.0. So this is how the standard library function works. So here the square root library is already present and uh, it returns the square root of a number which is a double value and the print library function which basically prints the message to the standard output stream. Okay, so this is about the standard library function. Now let's take a look at the user defined function. So this user defined function is created by the user. This function takes the parameters performs an action and returns the result of the action as a value. Okay, now let's take a look at an example for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is create another function here and I'm calling it enter. Okay, under this I'm going to create a variable called num is equal to 1 and the variable num1 is equal to 3 and I'm going to print the sum of this. So I'm going to say the sum is dollar does num1 plus num2. Okay, sorry, this is num and this is num1. So this prints the value 
and in the main function here I'm going to just call this function enter you can see that the suggestion appears and I'm going to print the sum okay the value is okay so let's run this code so it says the sum is 4 and the value is so I'm just going to change this println statement to addition successful okay okay I'm just going to run this again yeah it says the sum is 4 and addition successful so this is how the user defined function works in Kotlin I'm just repeating this again that everything you learn in Kotlin is similar to Java there are a few things here and there which are comparatively better than Java but the majority of the part deals with Java so you need to be well versed in Java if you're working on Kotlin now let's take a look at the parameterized function and the return values so functions also take parameters as arguments and returns a value so this Kotlin functions are defined using the Pascal notation that is specifying the name specifying the type that is the name of the parameter and its type so these parameters in the function are separated using commas now if a function does not return any value then its return type is a unit that means it specifies that it is not returning any value and it is also optional to specify the return type of the function definition which does not return any value so this is about the functions in Kotlin now let's take a look at the recursion function recursion in Java is function calling itself the same procedure is followed in Kotlin as well the recursion function is the function which calls itself continuously okay so the syntax I think all of you know how recursion works in Java it is same in Kotlin as well specify the function function name and uh, write the corresponding code and calling the same function without using the keyword return okay so let's take a look at the example I'm just going to take off this import function for now so first I'm going to create a new function by the name cot Kotlin or uh, KT so in this function I'm going to first declare the variable and call it cot is equal to zero I'm going to declare another variable called var count is equal to zero so instead of specifying it over here I'm going to specify this out of this function over here so I can directly increment the value of count so count plus plus which increments the value of count and I'm going to use the if condition so if cot is less than or equal to 5 I'm going to print a dureka and I'm going to increment the count plus count right it returns the count value here so I'm going to call the name of this function here that is kt yeah so this is recursion here and again in the main function I'm going to call this function kt okay so let's run this program oh I think I've made a mistake here it should be the count so if count is less than 5 we can print the values from 1 to 5 right so I'm just correcting it and running it so as you can see it is printing edureka 1 2 3 4 5 so this is how recursion works in Kotlin now let's move ahead and take a look at the lambda functions in Kotlin lambda is a function which has no name it is defined within a curly braces which actually takes variable as a parameter and the body of the function so the body of the function is written after you specify the variable which is followed by the assign to operator so the syntax of this lambda function is curly braces specifying the variable assigning operation and the body of the function so I think you guys know how to add two numbers in Kotlin now so let's take a look at how to add two numbers using the lambda function in Kotlin so I'm just going to clear all of this so I'm going to be using the val here instead of variable 
because I'll be using constants here so while specifying the function called my lambda which is an inbuilt function of Kotlin so this function basically helps in getting all the lambda functions in the program and uh, specify its type as integer and I'm going to assign this integer value to unit unit is basically something which does not return anything so do note to add integer in braces and then this takes the syntax of the lambda expression I'm going to call this as P and uh, this P is in the form of an integer which is going to print the value of P okay so we got it right now let's say we'll use another function so we are not going to go in depth into this lambda functions here so I'm just going to give an overview of what it is so let's try to add two numbers here so for that I'm going to create another function for now that is function add number so I'm going to call this as a which is of the form int comma b which is of the form int again and then my lambda my lambda which is also of the form int which takes in the unit okay do note to be it in the braces it's throwing an error it must have a body okay I'm just going to write a few commands here so that we can add two numbers as the numbers are constant I'm going to consider using val so add is equal to a plus b and after this I'm going to specify the function my lambda and specify the value add so this function holds the result of a plus b that is add so here in the main function let's try to print so it is add number yeah you can see that it's popping up I'm going to give a as 3 and uh, b as 6 and I'm going to specify my lambda so let's run this program for now so we'll understand what this my lambda function is in the coming classes so you can see that it is printing the sum as 9 that is 3 plus 6 so this is how you add two numbers in Kotlin using lambda function now how can you work with Java and Kotlin simultaneously let's take a look so if you're working with languages like C, C++ or Python and so on you need an interface to work with another language also but in case of Kotlin you don't need that it works both on Java as well as Kotlin simultaneously so let's understand how this is done okay so I'm just going to delete all of this so the first thing I'll do here is I'll create a new class that is a new Java class okay so I'm going to call this as new Java class yeah you can see that it is of the form class click on OK okay this is visible to you guys under this Java class I'm going to declare a access specifier that is private and specify the string name so the next thing we need to do is get the name and set the name so how to do that using Kotlin when you're declaring the access specifier you need to use the semicolon here once the access specifier is declared I'm going to set and get the values so in this case it is name so I'm going to set the name and get the name so to do that I'm going to type public as you can see the suggestion says public void set name public string get name so first I'm going to set the name and then I'm going to get the name okay so you might have this question how can you include the object of Java into the Kotlin project so this is way too simple guys just go back to our project create a new variable called edureka and link it to new Java class okay so this helps in getting the objects from the Java class and in order to set and get the name from Java class to the Kotlin class I'm just going to consider the variable that is edureka dot you can find get name and set name all are included under the single variable name 
I'm going to provide value to this as Kotlin. So in order to verify if it's working or not, I'm going to print it, print the name that is edureka.name. Let's check if it's working or not. So you can see that it is printing Kotlin directly. So this is how Java and Kotlin work together. Now say if you want to convert this Java code into your, a Kotlin code. How do you do that using IntelliJ? This is a very nice platform to work on Kotlin guys. All you need to do here is select your class and go to code where you'll find an option called convert Java file to Kotlin. So I'm just going to click on it. It says rest of the project requires correction. Yep. You can see that it has changed. It is creating a variable called name which is of the form string and it is assigned to a null value. You can also check the extension which is changed from .java to .kt. Now you might have this question. How can you convert the Kotlin program to a Java program? In order to do that we use a decompiler which I will not be discussing in this topic because we use an external source in order to decompile the Kotlin code. So this is how easy Kotlin works. Now let's take a look at the final topic of this tutorial video that is advantages of Kotlin. I'm not going to compare Kotlin with Java, but I'm just going to specify the advantages of Kotlin alone. So the advantages are namely it is completely interoperable with Java. It is more concise than Java. It runs safer code and it comes with a smarter and a safer compiler easier to maintain and it's been created to boost your productivity. So coming to the final thoughts for this tutorial video, there are two things which are sure when you're comparing Java and Kotlin for Android development. Java isn't going anywhere. It will be a long time until it gets completely phased out by Kotlin. Kotlin on the other hand is here to stay and it will get even more developer friendly as the time goes on. So I would like to take up a few names of the companies which are using Kotlin's new features in the mobile applications that is Pinterest, Basecamp, Coursera. They have successfully implemented Kotlin's new features into their mobile applications. So that's it for today's Kotlin tutorial for beginners guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do leave your queries in the comment section below so that we could get back to you and reply to you ASAP. Thank you for watching this video. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!